In this presentation, we're going to continue our study of geometry, and we're going to look at perimeter and area of squares and rectangles. Now, on this page, you'll see a list of definitions and ways to find perimeter and area for squares and rectangles. And I'm going to show you different examples of these. So I'm going to go through these now, and if you need to come back to them later on, you can just pause the video or rewind the video and check it out. Uh, let's continue. First of all, we have perimeter. And perimeter is the distance around a polygon. So if you were to walk around the polygon and measure the distance, the distance all the way around would be its perimeter. Now, in order to find the perimeter, you can add the lengths of each of the sides. I'm going to show you examples of how to do that for squares and rectangles. And then if you look down the page, we have area over here. And area is the number of square units needed to cover the surface of a polygon. And below that, we have finding area, and where you count the number of square units that cover the polygon, or you can use the following formulas. And for the area of a square, move this out of the way. For the area of a square, your area is the length of the so of one side squared. And you also see it written this way. A equals side squared. Okay. So, for example, if you had an, uh, a square with the side of, let's say, six, six units, or we could just say six meters, you would just take that side, okay, A equals side, like six meters um, squared would mean six times six, so the area would be 36 meters squared. And then moving on to the area of a rectangle, we have area equals length times width. And I'll give you some examples of those too. Again, if I went too fast, you can pause, go back, look at this page. If you want to take notes, that's okay too. But feel free to go back and check out this page. Let's go on. The first example, we have a square. And oftentimes, when you see a square, they list just one measure of one side. And knowing something about squares, and you know, if you looked at our previous post on, on polygons, and parallelograms, and squares, etc., you'd see that squares have all sides the same length. So if we're trying to find the perimeter, now perimeter equals the distance around the polygon or the object. I mean, you could imagine this being a... Uh, maybe a, you're walking around the outside of a garden and each side measures three centimeters. And like I said, you might see it listed somewhere and they just give the measure of one side and it's just assumed, and you can do that when you're talking about a square, that all sides are the same. So if I just added up all the sides, three, I'm walking along that side, then add three more, plus three, that would be, well, 3, you could even say 3 times 4 in this case, or 12. You're probably thinking about that as your answer. Good for you. And that would be measured in centimeters, because you're really, you're really, you know, traveling around the outside of this square. And you'd find it to be 12 centimeters. Now, if we took a look at area, and I mentioned that area is of a square is like sides squared, okay? So, I mean, you can think of it as length times width, but in a square, the length and width are the same size. So, you can just take a measure of one side, which would be three, and square that. So, we have that exponent there. We've covered exponents in order of operations before. Check out those posts if you need to. And now, we can find our area. Our area is 3 squared, so that means 3 times 3. And, well, let me bounce that down just a little bit. So 3 times 3 would equal 9. So that would be 9 centimeters squared. And I mentioned that definition for area. It's the number of square units you need to cover an area, or some people say to fill an area or a polygon. So if you look at that, 
you can see that indeed you do have nine square units. You can count them. There's one, two. Well, why don't I write the numbers? That would be a little bit clearer. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine square units in there, square centimeters in this case. So there's the area of that square. Let's try another. Again, if I'm going too fast, please feel free to pause the video. Come back to this. All right, here's another one. And this is a rectangle. So we'll find the perimeter first. All right, so perimeter equals, you know, if you add up all the sides, if you, or you could do for a, a rectangle, you could do two times the length plus two times the width. And we can fill those in. Okay, the length is the longest side. And you can see up here, four centimeters is the length. So we'll just input that into our perimeter formula. P equals 2 times 4 plus 2 times the width. And the width would be found over here. Some people think of how wide it is. So that would be 2 centimeters for this rectangle. So 2 times 2. Now we've got a perimeter of 2 times 4 is 8 plus, notice how we're doing uh, using these parentheses first, or multiplication first, before addition. So 2 times 2 is 4. And now you can add. Another example of order of operations hidden inside this perimeter formula. So you've got a perimeter of 12 centimeters. Now to find the area. Now area, as I listed on that page earlier, was length times width. So, we already highlighted the length over there, so we'll just input it into our formula here. Our length was 4, and our width was 2. So, you simply multiply those together, and you're probably thinking, Mr. Marinick, I know that one. Well, good for you. 4 times 2 is 8, and our label would be centimeters squared. Let's check it out. Let's see if it takes 8 square centimeters to, to cover the surface here. Now, often, if you go to a, maybe a home improvement store and you're looking to cover a floor, maybe you were tiling a floor, and, and you wanted to figure out how many square units you need, you have to find the area. And this particular one would be kind of a small area because it's measured in centimeters, but to kind of get the idea. And you can see clearly that there are two, four, six, eight square centimeters that would cover that rectangle. So there's the area. We'll try another one. Ah, another square. Hopefully you're thinking, ah, I'm getting the hang of this. Good for you. So we're going to find perimeter first. And perimeter. Uh, for this square, we, will, we know that it's 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus another 2. So you're assuming that the other sides measure 2 centimeters as well. They, they do in a square. Add those up. Perimeter equals 2 plus 2 is 4, plus another group of 4 over there would be 8. And your unit is centimeters. So your perimeter would be 8 centimeters. Area. Area for a square, we could take the side and raise it to the power of 2 there. So if you take the length of one of the sides, it would be 2, and you apply that exponent there, which means 2 times 2, and that would give you 4. So you'd have 4 centimeters squared, or 4 square centimeters. Let's check it out. Yeah, that's exactly what we've got. 4 square centimeters. Next one, another rectangle. All right. So we look at the perimeter, and that equals 2 times the length, or 2 times the width, or plus 2 times the width, and we input our length and width. The longest side would be 3, so let's put that in there. P equals 2 times the length, which was 3, plus 2 times the width, which would be 2. So now we can figure these out. We've got 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Add those together. Perimeter equals 6 plus 4. So the perimeter must be 
I bet you figured that out. Good for you. Centimeters. Ten centimeters. Now to the area. I think the area formula is a little more fun because you get to use multiplication. And it's a little bit quicker, too. So we've got area equals length times width. Our length, again, you can see over here would be this longest side, three centimeters. And then our width would be over here, our two centimeters. So we'll multiply those together, three times two. And our area would be, three times two is six. Six centimeters, and you have to remember, squared. Let's see if it's six square units. Exactly, it would be, exactly. Now let's move on. We've got another example of a rectangle. Let me just move this out of the way. Well, there we go. We have that rectangle and our perimeter. We look at those sides. In this case, let's just add up the sides. We have a side of five and a rectangle. Opposite sides are equal, so we can put that. Fill in those measures. So we could just simply do 5 plus 5 plus 3 plus 3. Because, I mean, really, if you were to walk around that perimeter, those are the measurements you add up. Probably in a different order, you'd probably do 5 plus 3 plus 5 plus 3. But anyhow, 5 plus 5 is 10. Plus 3 plus 3 is 6. And our perimeter will be 16 centimeters. On to the area. We're kind of cruising right through this. Area equals length times width. That's the formula for the rectangle. And we'll input the length and width. By now you probably know 5 times 3. And there, your area would be 15 centimeters squared. There they are, 15 centimeters, a 3 by 5 setup, 3 times 5 is 15. There are 15 square units or square centimeters there. Now we have something a little bit more complex. We've got a rectangle and a square put together. So let's try to find the perimeter first. Now the perimeter equals the distance around the polygon or polygons grouped together. We give you this figure. So now let's check out these sides. I know that four centimeters up on the top would be the length. And then let's take a look. We have two centimeters on the right side of that upper rectangle. So opposite sides being equal. We know that this side over here is two centimeters. And then if you look at this figure down here, now let me just highlight that for you. This figure here, that although it's stretched out to look like a rectangle, is actually a square. We've got a side of two centimeters. So that means all sides would be equal. This side would be two centimeters. And this side would be two centimeters. So now we need to add up all those lengths. So in this case, perimeter would equal, let's just list them as we go around. We'll start here with this four. Four plus two plus one, plus two, look at all those numbers adding up, plus two, all right, let's make sure we're keeping track, I've got this one, yep, this two, yes, that one, yes, oh, we have to get this one, plus two more centimeters, plus one centimeter here, it's good to keep track when you're going around a figure like this, and we have to add that last two. Wow, look at that perimeter. So if you added those up, you get 4 plus 2 would be 6. 6 plus 1 would be 7. 7 plus 2, 7, 8, 9. 9 plus 2 would be 11. 11 plus 2, 13. 14 plus 2 would be 16 to go around that figure. Wow, that's, that's interesting. Pretty... Uh, quite a distance around this figure. So we've got 16 centimeters. Okay, let's double check our work. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 
12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, double checks out. So your perimeter is 16 centimeters to go around the outside of this figure. Now we have to find area. Now what I would do for area is take first the rectangle, so it would be L times W. So I'm going to look at this rectangle up here. So my length is 4 and my width is 2, so the area of that part would be, oops, 8 centimeters squared. Now I want to find the area for this, the square. So the area for the square equals sides squared. Let me just divide that out so you see, or separate my work. So now we'll take the side of 2 and square it. So 2 times 2. Your area would be 4 centimeters squared. If you add those two, we've got 8 plus, so the 8 up here plus the 4 equals 12 centimeters squared. Let's check it out. 8 up top. And we'll move that off. And we have 4 below it. So it's 8 plus 4 is 12 square centimeters. And there you go. There's a look at area and perimeter of squares and rectangles. Thanks for checking out Mr. Meredith's Edge Blog, and we'll see you again next time.